All right, guys, so Figma just dropped a bunch of new features onto their platform. We're going to dive right in and learn how to action 10 of those new features into our workflow right away. So jumping into this file over here, and if you want to follow along, make sure to download the link. It's in the description. It's all for free. So let's go ahead and master Figma. Now, the first thing we're going to learn is how to turn Figma into dark mode. Now, traditionally, your Figma will look something like this. If you head over to your Figma icon in the top left corner, go down to preferences, go down to theme and hit dark. You've got dark mode right away. There is one little thing, one little trick, head over to your design panel on the right hand side under background, change EEE to 2C, 2C, 2C. And do you see that dark mode in action? All right, guys, this is absolutely beautiful. Oh, and by the way, if you are new to Figma and you do want to master Figma from the ground up because you just want to get your head around how to utilize this powerful tool, Make sure to check the link in my description and check out my Figma Masterclass course. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Now I've gone ahead and designed a very quick homepage design and we're gonna actually utilize some of these new features, well at least nine of these features now, as we've just ticked off the first one, to make this workflow more efficient. So the first thing as you can see is that we've got a nice little banner at the in the top uh, corner uh, of the top of the page. And you can see that I've actually designed this incorrectly. So you can see I've got a, a frame that gives this the background color. And then we have the text and these asterisks inside. Now, a more efficient way is obviously use, if you have a guess, have a think about it, auto layout, right? So we're gonna delete this banner, delete that banner. I'm gonna select dark mode, which is the first text over here. I'm gonna hold down shift and select gently smash the like button. And that will select everything in between. I'm gonna hit shift A on the keyboard. And then I'm going to just rename this uh, frame to banner, for example. And then I'm going to give it a background color, right? I'm going to give it a background color of that nice little maybe light tone, uh, light beige uh, looking color. And then I'm just going to give it some, or even just uh, zero. And then on the vertical, I might just give it 12 just to give it some breathing room. As you can see, we've already got that banner. And now it's actually great because, because this is an auto layout component, we can start moving items around automatically. So I'm going to move this up to the top just going to move this up to the top, align it to the top. You can see it all spans off, looking great. And on the right hand side, you can see that auto layout has been given a makeover. It looks a little bit different, but don't be overwhelmed. It's still the same with some additional bells and whistles. You can still align your items vertically and horizontally. You can still adjust the spacing in between. You can also align the, the items inside to the top, to the bottom, to the left, to the right, whatever you want. You can also adjust the padding, but now it's just separated into two icons. So you have horizontal and vertical. And then if you click on this independent paddings, you have access to all four corners. Now, if you take a look at the, the three dots, we do have some additional features over here, but we'll go through that in a different exercise. Now, another thing you should realize is that previously, if you utilize auto layout, the first item generally would be sitting at the bottom of the list. And then the, bot the item at the bottom of the list in your layers panel would be the first item in your auto layout component. Figma has actually readjusted that. So now the first item in the layers list, which is sitting at the top, will be the first one being presented inside your auto layout component. So that is some new updates that you might not have noticed. Now, the third item that we're going to go ahead and learn about is another auto layout configuration. So as you can see in this header section, they are all standalone elements on the page. Now, if I'm just gonna click, I'm just gonna drag just to group them all together so you can see them together. Now, I'm gonna quickly optimize this header to utilize auto layout because you can see these four items over here, they technically should be in auto layout um, because we don't wanna manually create the spacing between each one. So I can highlight all these, hit Shift A, and that will create an auto layout component. I can set the spacing in between all the items to be 40, as you can see right there. And we can leave it as that. And then what I wanna do is actually wanna highlight these two buttons, right? And I wanna hit Shift A. And then this will give me an automatic spacing of 16 pixels in between. So now I have three groups, a logo, some navs, and some buttons. I can highlight them all. I can hit Shift A, and that will create an auto layout component. Now, the one thing I wanna show you is something that a lot of UI designers who are working on very small interfaces have noticed. If I simply draw a line, right, right underneath where the text is for the header items, I'll make this white as you can see it. You can see that the text never tends to really align with one another, right? And with UI designers who are working on very specific interfaces, 
we generally want to align all the elements inside our auto layout component by the center line or by the font's baseline, right? So what you can actually do now is if you head over to your header, which is containing all the items inside it, it's also an auto layout component. If we hit on the three dots, under the fourth item, text baseline alignment, if I hover in between these two icons, you can see that the first one aligns all the elements based on the center point of these elements. And if I hover on the check uh, on the tick, you can see that the text will align to the bottom of the type of the font, as you can see right there. So if I click on this icon over here, you can see now if I draw a line that extends from the left to the right, all the text are aligned based on the font's baseline. The text, uh, sorry, sorry, the text baseline, as you can see right there. So if I make this white, you can see that everything is beautifully aligned to the bottom of the text. Now, this is a key issue for a lot of UI designs previously. Figma has rolled out a new update, which solves a lot of the issues for designers who are working on UI design. Now, the fourth one is how to absolute position an icon inside an auto layout component. So here's an example, right? So we have a button over here and it's called icon. It's a frame with the name icon and inside we have some text and an actual icon inside. Now, obviously this button is not responsive. So if I want to change this to Mizco and it doesn't resize. So what we need to do is obviously select the icon, hit shift A, and that will turn this into an auto layout component, which is very standard for buttons inside Figma. So if we wanted to extend or change the text, the button will grow with us. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the, the text news because we don't need that, but we've also got the icon left. So I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard, drop down some text, I'm gonna type one. I'm gonna hit shift A to wrap that one inside an auto layout component. And then I'm gonna go, and then I'm actually going to give this a fill of a red, right? So we're gonna create a nice little alert icon for this new, uh, this bell icon over here. And obviously I might change the hug to fixed and then I can change the height to 24. And then I can actually center the text into the center by heading over to auto layout and clicking the center point over here. And then I might give this the border radius of 100. So this gives me an, a little icon. So if I hit command C, copy it, and then I double click into my icon over here, the button, you can see that I can never really position it to the top right corner, no matter what, because it's inside an auto layout component. Now, what we can do now is head over to the top right corner under frame. We can select this little icon with the plus inside absolute position. That will bring this item out of the context of the icon itself, the button itself, and it will allow us to freely move this icon inside and allow us to position this in technical terms, absolute positioning, right? So this is a great way to be able to place any item inside auto layouts. This is a godsend. This is a beautiful feature and an update that a lot of UI designers were struggling with. And what we had to do was actually go inside the component, hit command option F, or sorry, command option G, put the things inside a frame and then place items inside the frame, which was very tedious to do. All right, so onto the next update, which is negative spacing inside auto layout components. And this one is a beautiful one. So let's say we want to add some social proof to this homepage design. I'm gonna hit O on my keyboard, hold down shift and draw down a circle to maybe 44 pixels. And then I might actually go ahead and hit plugins, unsplash, and I might just drop in a very quick portrait. Now, so we've got a beautiful portrait of this beautiful person over here. As you normally would notice that if you hit Command D, you duplicate it and you can move it across. And normally what designers would be doing is they hit Command D again, Command D again, Command D again. So as you can see, what we would normally wanna do is we would wanna turn this component into an auto layout component. So once again, we don't need to adjust the spacing manually. So if we decide to increase the spacing, we didn't need to do it manually like this. So instead, what we can do is highlight the more, hit Shift A, right? And previously, this was not possible. Previously, if we went negative, right? If we just the auto layout our spacing to be negative, it would not overlap the images. So now we can automatically overlap these images without having to make tedious changes. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a stroke to these icons over here, or these profile photos, just so you can see it beautifully. Now, as you can see, the first one, right? 
even though it's first on the list, is actually beneath the second one. What we want to do is reverse this order of overlapping. So you can actually select this component, as long as it's an auto layout component, head over to auto layout, hit the three dots, and then what we can do is under canvas stacking, we can stack the first to the top now. So this will automatically reset the overlapping stacking method for your components, or your items inside the component. So this is once again a time saver because previously you would have to manually go ahead and reorder your layers literally in the layers panel to adjust the stacking. Now onto the next one, it's about favoriting projects. So if you were like me with a ton of projects that you are working on, if you want to favorite one so you have quick access to them, you can simply hover over one of your project files, you can hit the star icon and that will add that favorite a file over to your favorite files section inside your dashboard. Now back to the design, we have another one called custom animations. So let's say that we have this design and we are duplicating it because we wanna create some prototypes and some animations now to present to our developers. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply just go ahead and click on this image. I'm gonna drag it down so we can create some sort of transition. I'm gonna click on the first uh, artboard, hit, head over to prototype. I'm gonna connect the two different artboards together. On click, I can set instant to smart animate. So now if we go ahead and click on ease out, we have a few more presets. We have a few more gentle, quick, bouncy, slow. These weren't present in Figma previously, but we can also do custom spring, which allows us to really customize the curve of whatever we want to use. So if I go ahead and just simply tweak this curve a little bit and make it quite exaggerated and play around with it, make it really fast, and I close this up and I hit play, you'll be able to see if I go ahead and click now, we've got a nice little jump. So these custom animations really do bring your designs to life. Now we've got two more. So the, la the second last one is about individual borders. So if we go ahead and take a look and I'm gonna zoom right into my buttons and let's say we don't really like the look of this button, right? It's a bit too flat. We wanna add some more textures or make it feel a little bit more 3D. Previously, if you wanted to add a border to just one side of a, of a shape or an image or whatever, what, whatever component it might be, you would have to add an inner shadow. But now, if you go ahead and select your stroke, right, you can select this little icon, strokes per side, and you can now set an individual border per component. So if I select top, I can now change this to a white, bring down the opacity, and now if I zoom out, it looks like this beautiful 3D button with a nice little bright light coming down from the top. All right, and the last one we have is called Spotlight. So now when you have a team working in the same file and you are prototyping or you're walking through the entire team, the actual walkthrough of the designs, confirm that everyone is following your cursor. This will automatically align everyone to make sure you are the spotlight of the walkthrough. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough or some of the updates that Figma has, and I'll see you guys in another video very soon. Oh, and by the way, if you are new to Figma and you do wanna master Figma from the ground up because you just wanna get your head around how to utilize this powerful tool, make sure to check the link in my description and check out my Figma Masterclass course. But without further ado, let's get into the video.